All right, here we go with one that causes a lot of students problems. It's called chain rule. That's if we have a function composed of another function. So it's like, um, you ever seen the movie Inception? It's an older movie, but uh, God, it was so good. It's when you have like a function within a function. Well, in Inception, they had like, you know, reality within realities and things like that. But uh, there we go. In any case, uh, we have some function within a function. The way it's phrased with g of u, where u equals f of x, they're just telling you, see, there's a function g, and inside it, there's a function f of x. All right, and they tell you how to do the derivative. So it's dy du times du dx. Maybe after you're done with that, you feel like this dog. <laughs> I just thought I was so cute with this dog. You're like, what? <laughs> I'm trying to give you a little trick for it, okay? So I'll give you this little uh, pro tip here. Let's just see if I can get it to work. Um, let me just see here. Can I do this right here? No. So I'll just write it down then. Um, so the way I like to do it is I like to write it out. Let me just get on my keyboard here. All right, so pro tip. I'm going to write this down for you. So what I like to do is I like to write it like this. Um, I actually have my students memorize this. It's one of the few things I tell people to memorize. So derivative, because I think this, this function, the way it looks right now, I think is a little bit complicated for a lot of people. So I like to say the derivative of the, let's say, outside. I'll say with the original inside. Okay, I'll write this down. I'll explain it in a second. Uh, times uh, derivative of the inside. And I'll explain what I mean in a second here. This is maybe a good uh, way to do it. There we go. That'll be my pro tip I give you. So what is it that I mean by this? Let's let's spend a little bit of time discussing this. I think that'll be a good idea. So what is meant by this? We're going to have a function within a function. And if we do that, that means there must be something called an inside function and something called an outside function. And I do the derivative of the outside function, but I put the original inside, and I multiply that by the derivative of the inside. This usually makes no sense until we have some context. So let me show you this with some context here. So I'm just going to, uh, you know what I'm actually going to do? I'm going to take this piece right here, I'm going to copy it. I'm going to use it, I think, in every question. If I'm smart about it, I'll use it. So watch. We've got this big gross thing. So 2x plus 4, all that to the 5. You could expand it. I don't feel like it, but you could. You absolutely could do that. Uh, but no, I'm going to say, ah, look, I'm going to remember this is a function within a function. So let's figure out, first of all, what's the outside function? What's the inside? I think that's the important part here. So what's the outside function? And what's the inside function? This is actually the key to these. So the outside function, like the thing that's outermost, I think is some junk to the 5. That's the outermost function in my mind. This is like something to the 5. The inside function, see it's nested within it. That must be this 2x plus 4. Okay, so this is the outside function. I'm doing this thing to this outside function. Then I've got this inside. Well, then, just by the way I've set it up, this is super easy now. Watch. What's the derivative of the outside then? So what's the derivative of junk to the 5? Like if I have something to the exponent of 5, how do I do the derivative? Okay, let's write this down here. So how do I do the derivative? Well, it's 5 times some junk to the 4. Isn't that what we do with derivatives? We take the exponent, we put it in front, and then we make the new exponent 1 less. So I've done the derivative of the outside. See, 5 times some junk to the 4. And what do I put inside? Ah, the original inside. So in other words, 2x plus 4. See what I've just done? Then I'm going to multiply by the derivative of the inside. What's the derivative of 2x plus 4? Well, the 4 just disappears. It goes away because the derivative of a constant is 0. This is like this little 1 here. So 1 times 2 is just 2 times x to the power of 0, which is just 1. So it's actually just 2. There, just like this. It's just this. This is the only answer here from this derivative. Well, then all I have to do is just fix it up a little bit. 2 times 5. So I'll just say, ah, so finally, dy dx is just going to be equal to 2 times 5, which is 10 times 2x plus 4, all that to the 4th, and I'm done. See how awesome that was? I actually like chain rule. I find once you know how it works, chain rule is fast. It's actually really, really quite handy. So this one I really like. Let's do another example to see if we can uh, put it into context. I like this one when your mom calls you by your full name because that's the definition of a derivative. If you saw my video on that, there you go. Uh, let's do it with cosines. Oh, God, that looks complicated, right? Well, let's remind ourselves if it's chain rule, we we'll just see I've got a cosine of some junk. How do I do the derivative? I don't panic. I just got to consider what's the outside, what's the inside. So let me consider what's the outside function. 
I think it should be the cosine of some junk. So the inside function then should be, let's see, should be the rest of it. So it's 3x squared over 2 plus x. Try to do that there. There we go. All right, let's do the derivative of the outside. If I had a cosine, what's the derivative of cos? Do you remember what derivative of cos is? Let me just maybe do it in black then. So f prime of x will be, let's see, derivative of the outside. Cosine's derivative, you can look it up in your formula booklet, cosine's derivative is minus sine. So I'm going to say it's a minus sine of some junk. That's the derivative of the outside. But what do I put in? Oh, the original inside. So I put in that junk here. So 3x squared over 2 plus x. Then I multiply this whole mess by this derivative. What's the derivative of this? Well, let's see. The 2 is going to come in front, so it's going to be 6 times x to the power of 1, all that over 2, plus, let's see, this one here has a little 1 here, 1 is going to come in front here, and this is going to become uh, 1 minus 1 is 0, x to the 0 just 1, so it's just going to be this. This is going to be the answer. Keep in mind, this right here gives me uh, 3, doesn't it? This one here, 6 over 2 is just 3. So keep in mind, then I can rewrite it then as f prime of x equals, let's see, normally we put the thing in front of the sign first, because otherwise you might think it's minus sine of this times this, and it's not. I want minus sine of this thing, and that whole answer times this. So I'll put this in front, maybe to make it more clear. There's a minus in front, so I'll say 3x plus 1, all that times sine of that big mess there, 3x squared over 2 plus x. There we go. So do you see how we can do really complicated looking things and make them, dare I say it, not so bad, as long as you just take your time and remember how to use this chain rule. Let's do one more example, this time with a specific one, and it looks really hard and we'll see what to do with it, but you'll see hopefully we can break it down and make it easier. So again, chain rule, because we have ln of 2 times sine x, and you might think, oh god, how do I do that? We relax. We just think, what's the outside function? The outside function is ln of some junk. The inside function is 2 times sine x. Okay. Now, again, we do the derivative, derivative sorry, of the outside. We'll first do f prime of x. Then we'll plug in pi over 3 when we're done. But let's just first find the derivative everywhere. So how do I do this? Well, the derivative of the outside function, let's see. What's the derivative of ln? You look this up on your formula booklet, but it's 1 over some junk. That's what derivative of ln is just 1 over. So it's 1 over junk. And what do I put in there? The original inside, which is 2 sine x. All right. Then I multiply that whole answer by the derivative of the inside. What's the derivative of 2 sine x? You look it up on your formula booklet. Derivative of sine is cos. So it's 2 cos x. All right. So now I have f prime of x equals... 2 cos x over 2 sine x. Do you notice what happens? The 2's at least cancel out. So I have f prime of x equals cos x, whoops, I could say it's cosine of x over sine of x. Now depending on your math uh, level, I don't know if you've heard about this, it depends if you're HL, you'll eventually learn this is called cotangent. This whole thing is actually called cotangent of x, but let's assume you didn't know that. that this whole thing here is called cot. So let's just do it individually. So let's let's just ignore that it's a cotangent, because maybe we're not an HL, maybe we're an SL. Then let's just deal with this and say cosine of x over sine of x. That we can do. We can do that at pi over 3. So let's do this. So we're going to attempt now to do all this at pi over 3. That's going to be our goal. Now we want f primed at pi over 3. Well, what's that going to be? It's going to be cosine of pi over 3, all that divided by the sine of pi over 3. Now, you have to then remember how to do sine or cosine of pi over 3. There's a number of ways of doing this. One of them is to remember that your reference angle for pi over 3, that is uh, 60 degrees. You could know that by doing the unit circle or go back and look at the videos that I have on uh, topic uh, on the trigonometry topic. But if you look at this one right here, you can then maybe you remember your special triangles. Maybe that's how you've learned how to do them, where this is over here is 60 degrees. This is 30 degrees, this is 90, this goes 1, 2, root 3. So that means then that cosine of 60 degrees then will be, let's see, cosine is 
cos, so adjacent over hypotenuse, so it's 1 over 2. And I would know that sine of 60 degrees then must be, let's see, sine is opposite of hypotenuse, so root 3 over 2. That's one way of doing it. There's lots of ways, right? Some people memorize something. Some people use this little hand trick, so watch this one. See this one right here? Well, let me show you this one right here. This one here is a good way right here. If you know it's 60 degrees, so you take your left hand, you uh, hide this finger down, so you put your 60 degree finger down. Do you notice then you have three fingers to the left? So what you do is your sine is to the left here, so sine is root three over two, because it's always the square root of the number of fingers over two. So see if you have 60 degrees, you have three fingers to the left that aren't down. So because of that then it'll be sine of 60 degrees is root three over two, but we just said that was the case, look, see? Sine of 60 is root 3 over 2. And the other answer is, let's see, if you lower your 60 degree finger, cosine is the number of fingers to the right. There's 1, root 1 over 2. The square root of 1 is just 1. So that's why you get 1 half. You see, it's another way of getting it. It doesn't matter how you get there. You just got to be able to get there. So finally, 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 we go ahead and do it. We say, all right, so pi over 3 is going to be, let's see, cosine of pi over 3, which is 1 half. All that divided by sine of pi over 3, which is root 3 over 2. What happens when you divide a fraction by a fraction? You multiply by the reciprocal. So I take this fraction, I flip it. It becomes 2 over root 3. The 2's cancel out. Boom, boom. I end up with 1 over root 3. Which, by the way, some people don't like to put the roots on the bottom, but it doesn't matter. You can multiply the top and the bottom by root 3. You'll get root 3 over, let's see, root 3 times root 3 will be 3. This is correct. So is this. Both these answers are correct. Phew! Isn't that a little bit crazy? Now, could you actually have done this right here on a calculator? Yeah, sure. Let me just show you this. You could actually do it on a calculator. Watch, watch, watch. I'll show you this here. So what if I do, um, let's see, f of x here equals ln. So I'll do, um, give me a graph. So I'll just get out of here. I'll say, give me a graph of the natural log of, let's see, 2 times sine of x. All right, and I get this big mess. And then I say, what is the derivative? So it gave me the derivative, so dy dx, at x equals, let's see, I'm going to put in uh, pi over 3. And I get 0.577. Do you see that? 0.577. And let's go to another page here and see what that is. What is 1 over the square root of 3? Hey, look at that. It's the same. So we actually did this by hand. We didn't need a calculator for that. So although it looks really gross, and we found the gradient of this graph. See that the gradient is like some positive number here like that. So phew. Do you see how powerful this is? We can do a lot of really deep stuff. Keep in mind, this is pretty complicated seeming. Certainly this example here was. But I hope you'll see they're not all so crazy. A lot of the times you'll get ones just like this. They're not actually so bad at all. So the key is don't panic. Just remember derivative of the outside with the original inside times the derivative of the inside. And hopefully you don't feel like this dog anymore. <laughs>